Hi there and welcome back. Let's look at the vascular disorders when it comes to the nervous system. This will again be a quick overview. Cerebrovascular accident CVA is a damage to the brain caused by the disorder within the blood vessels of the cerebrum. This is popularly known as stroke or the cerebral infarction and is a result of a localized area of ischemia and ultimately infarction or the necrosis in the brain. Ischemia and infarction. We have reviewed this while studying the heart or the cardiology that a person can have a ischemia or infarct. Ischemia means inadequate oxygen and infarct means when the inadequate oxygen continues the ischemia leads to the infarction, so the tissue turns dead. That's the heart attack or here the, the tissue of the brain gets dead. And when it is in transition, it is called a mini stroke or a TIA, right? So this can be caused by thrombosis, embolism and hemorrhage and we'll get into each one of these. So thrombosis is a blood clot in the arteries leading to the brain resulting, resulting in blockage of the uh, vessel. Atherosclerosis that is the, the process that or the deposits or the plaques that builds up that can lead to the stroke or the uh, damage to the brain. But before that, there may be some periodic symptoms and that is transition labeled as a TIA. What is embolism? Embolism is a mass such as a blood clot or collection of bacteria that breaks off from its place of origin and occludes a cerebral artery. So this type of stroke occurs very suddenly. Thrombo, thrombosis is a blood clot and embolism is a blood clot. What's the difference in the embolism? It can break from the original site and it could even travel and it can stop anywhere. Whereas the hemorrhage is the bleeding or the bursting force of blood from a cerebral artery. So this type of stroke is often fatal and results from advanced age, atherosclerosis or high blood pressure. All or any one of them can result into the hemorrhage. So if the hemorrhage is small, then it can be, the blood can be reabsorbed and the patient can make a, a good recovery with some slight disability. In a younger patient, the cerebral hemorrhage is usually due to the mechanical injury associated with the skull fracture or bursting of an arterial aneurysm that is weakness in the vessel wall that balloons and eventually burst. So aneurysm, we have reviewed that in a separate video, but uh, in the young person, this typically happens for variety of injuries, so on and so forth, right? That we reviewed in the one of the previous session on a traumatic brain injury. So let's look at some of these slides. So area of brain deprived of blood because of the blood clot, and see the blood unable to pass due to the blood vessel. Another slide to look at how the carotid artery, that is the artery that goes from your neck to the head, that is blocked uh, because of the blood clot. So some of us may have been familiar with this, but they say that stroke is an emergency, every minute counts, act fast. So F-A-S-T, act fast. The symptoms that we see on face, arms, speech, 
could be the trigger to say that hey call 911 face does one side of the face droop ask the person to smile arms is one arm weak or numb ask the person to raise both arms does one arm drift downward speech is speech slurred ask the person to repeat a simple sentence is the sentence repeated correctly this is something everybody should know the stroke and mini stroke we discussed mini stroke is a TIA uh, that is ischemia that ultimately leads to the infarct or the tissue turns dead and hence it is labeled as cerebral infarction or the stroke and again the embolic and travel anywhere doesn't matter any organ including your heart okay so embolus can be threatening the underwriters are familiar with and many of us may be knowing that the stroke or TIA the workup would include starting from your left test to ultrasound to CT scan to MRI to uh, cardiac monitor, EKG, echo, you name it. This is just to highlight that when we talk about hemorrhage, there is a bleeding. Okay? And this is something ischemic stroke that start from ischemia to infarct. Okay? So that's all I have on this one. And uh, enough on the disorders and diseases. Now what should we do if we want to remain healthy and to keep our brain healthy? When we come back, we'll take a look at those details. Take care. Bye-bye.